So, since nobody else has arrived at the campsite yet, I can talk into the camera without worrying about getting any funny looks. I've complained in a couple of blog posts and videos now about badly designed campsites and how frustrating and difficult it is to try and hike a long distance trail when there's nowhere really to pitch a tent for the night, where it's kind of expected that you're going to sleep in a hotel or a guest house or bring a giant camper van or something. The, the idea of packing a backpacking tent and putting down a small tent for the night in a space that's actually designed for that and not for any of the rest of it seems to be mostly foreign here. But I say mostly because it's not entirely unheard of. I'm on my first night hiking my very favorite trail in northern Germany, or I guess western, eastern Germany. I'm on the Czech-German border along the Forststeig, the forest trail. It's an international trail. It passes for a section through Czechia, Czechia, sorry but mostly is on the German side. It's 104 kilometers. I'm going to try and do it in five days. We'll see how it goes. It's a pretty strenuous trail. It's about 4,000 meters of elevation change altogether. All um, so quite, quite a challenge. Um, I usually do it in six days, but I'm going to see if tomorrow if I can manage to do two relatively short days all in one day. We'll see. Uh, but the other reason I wanted to show this trail is because unlike every other long distance hiking trail I've been on up here in Germany, the Vorsteig is really well set up f for backpackers. It's specifically designed for people who normally would go to Scandinavia or go to New Zealand or the United States for hiking. It's designed for those kinds of people, the kind of people who want to spend a week with a backpack and sleeping in their tent and nothing else. You can sleep in, there are also overnight huts, like shelters. I'll show you one of those tomorrow night. But what I have done so far on all of the times I've hiked this trail, this is my third time hiking it, is I've stayed at what are called the bivouac sites, the bivouacplätze, and those are really, really excellent, so I wanted to show them to you. I am at Taubenteich, uh, that, is, that means um, dove pond, this is the pond, uh, but behind me there's a really nice fireplace, and when other people are here they usually set up a fire and it's very festive. You can sort of see behind it there is a small outhouse that is a composting toilet that the forest staff mucks out every I guess once a week or every few days when it's needed. Um, but if you look in the in the back, that is some space for tents that's been cleared out. You can see my tent all the way in the back. There is a little shelter for overnights if the weather is really bad. Um, all of the Bivakplätze are like that. They have it's mostly designed for people with tents. But if there's really inclement weather, a storm or something, you can also stay in these tiny little shelters. And also, there is a covered eating area, a picnic bench and, you know, with a roof. Um, usually those picnic benches are a little more traditionally made, and they also really nicely have a metal strip down the middle of them where you can set up your cooking stoves. I think that's an excellent little detail that most other campsites don't think of, but they put a lot of care into making sure that the site really works well for backpackers, and that's one of the nice little details that makes it a really pleasant experience. I'll show you one of those tomorrow night as well. But they also have a little shed in the back with wood and a chopping block. The overnight shelters, the cabins, also all have a little cast iron wood stove that you can set up a fire in. I do that. The one night I stay in a cabin is will be tomorrow night. That is at Kamphüte, and I usually take that day to do laundry. I'm not going to have enough laundry this time to do it, 
and I'm probably going to be getting in later in the day because I have 28 kilometers to do tomorrow. But usually I light up the stove and warm up the inside and use that to wash my clothes and then dry them. Uh, but here, that's all for the fire pit for people just to sit around. And you can see in the back there's a little info table, a little info information board with some fire control equipment, a bucket, and some a fire extinguisher, I think, is even in there, and a fire blanket. And I, th I think the biggest problem that a lot of regional tourist offices and governments have is they can't really think of how to make money off of backpackers. Uh, that's something I mentioned in my blog post as well, that people who just show up and put a tent out in the woods, they're not paying a hotel or eating in a restaurant. And so the local economy doesn't make any money off of it, which is why there's no interest. But the solution they figured out here is to stay at one of these overnight spots, you have to have a ticket. You can buy tickets at, like, backpacking stores. There's one in Berlin. It's 10 euro, whether you stay in one of the cabins or whether you stay in one of these bivac plats. It doesn't matter. And so for every night, you have to have a ticket. So I have five in my bag, and when I get to the site, I fill it out, tear it in half, and throw half of it in the little box. And a f person from the forest office comes by in the evenings when we're all eating dinner and checks everybody's tickets. So they do earn some money from it. The last year I saw that they had statistics for how many people were using the trail, they said it was something like, 15,000 people over the summer from April to October. So if you think the average stay for them is four nights along the trail, not everybody completes the whole trail, so the average is four. So that would be about 60, if I'm doing my math, am I doing my math right? I'm not doing my math right. It's 600,000 euro that they're making in income, which isn't a lot of money for a large forest management service like the Saxon Forest Service, which is, Saxony is where, is the region where the, on the German side where this is. It's not a lot of money, but it does pay for a decent amount of upkeep and staffing and interns and things like that. And some of the things that I, run into along the trail are new, like this old bench, very cute, with names of cities and distances. That was new last year. And they do little improvements every year. They come in and fix things and put in new things and do trail improvements and clear the trail. I think that's a big problem right now. Um, they're having to do a lot of clearing of dead trees because the bark beetles are just destroying everything. So a lot of the trail this season was impassable, so they had to do a lot of detours. So that all costs money. So they earn a decent amount of in income from the tickets themselves, and I think that's a really clever solution. And I think I, I really wish more of the forest offices and tourism offices that are trying to get backpackers to come visit their regions would actually think of these things. And it's it's not cheap obviously, like these picnic benches, they cost money, the composting toilet costs money, the shelters and the cabins, they all have upkeep costs. So I, I don't know that they're making a profit, but the money from the tickets certainly would offset, a, I, would, I would imagine, a significant amount of it. So I, I hope other tourism offices and forest bureaus and regional governments, if they ever see this, I hope they take the example of the Forsteig and the way they set up the Bivak Plätze to heart and implement that in their own regions. Because I really love hiking the trails around here. It's just I hate having to try and find somewhere to camp every night when it's not really made for that. Okay, that's it for now. I will pick up tomorrow and I have a really long day but the trail tomorrow goes through some really incredible rock uh, cliff terrain rocky cliff terrain 
that's really nice to see. So I'll try and shoot some video from that and take some pictures and stuff. So I'll see you then.